As the Second World War came to a close, a bright young scientist at the University of Minnesota wondered how best to refeed the millions of civilians in Europe who had lived for years under German occupation and had been effectively starved during the war. Ansel Keys, professor of physiology at the University of Minnesota, wanted to investigate the numerous physical and psychological effects semi-starvation produced and find out how best to rehabilitate those who had undergone extreme deprivation during the war. And so, he designed an experiment that would do just that. Until then, except for the occasional anecdotal report, relatively little was known about the effects of human starvation, both physical and psychological. And perhaps more importantly, scientists and doctors had next to no idea about how to rehabilitate the survivors of starvation. And so the Minnesota starvation experiment became the first and last study of its kind, a study where Ansel Keys would recruit 36 healthy young male volunteers and literally starve them. Yeah, you heard that right, he starved them for 24 weeks. And then he refed them, which somehow ended up being so much worse. My name is Hashem and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor and this is Doctor Tell Me Why. If you are new here then just know that I post weekly medical videos about the latest groundbreaking medical research, I also tell you about all these fascinating medical conditions and give you top tips on how to live longer, stronger and well of course healthier. So if that's the sort of content that you want to see more of here on YouTube then I recommend you smash the like button right now and subscribe for more videos just like this. Today we will be taking a closer look at the Minnesota starvation experiment, clarifying what happens when caloric intake is suddenly slashed, as what takes place during a famine or more often today when someone decides to go on a crash diet, something I definitely don't recommend by the way. The Minnesota starvation experiment is actually a really interesting study, partly because it is a unicorn, it is one of a kind. It's the sort of study that would have only been possible up until the mid 1940s, when ethical standards for research involving human subjects were, let's say, a little more lax than they should have been. I genuinely don't think you would be able to replicate this study today without ending up in prison or something. Today, ethical standards for research involving humans tends to be much more rigorous. This is largely a result of the horrific experiments carried out by Nazi doctors on prisoners in concentration camps becoming public knowledge, bringing about a revolution in research ethics, a much needed revolution. But before all of that, Ansel Keys was able to carry out his meticulous study. And when I say meticulous, I definitely mean it. It was meticulous to a fault. Keyes ended up publishing his findings in a 1385 page document called The Biology of Human Starvation, which ended up becoming a landmark work on human starvation and nutrition and still finds itself relevant to this day in the treatment of eating disorders like anorexia. As always, you should find chapters and references in the description below where you can also find links to my various social media accounts should you wish to follow me on there too. Before Keyes could carry out his novel experiment, he needed one thing that all experiments need. Volunteers. There was only one problem with that of course, the majority of young and healthy men who would have made perfect candidates for the study were unavailable, they were busy fighting a war abroad. There was one group of people however who made the perfect volunteers and they were conscientious objectors, men who had refused to serve in the war out of religious or personal conviction, like Quakers for example. Conscientious objectors were actually still very patriotic and wanted to help in the war effort in any meaningful way, just not in a way that ended up killing other people, you know, a kind of way that benefits humanity. And so, when told that the findings of the Minnesota starvation experiment would be invaluable in devising refeeding programs for the millions of civilians who were effectively starved in Europe, you can imagine that they were very keen to sign up. But before they could sign up, Keyes assessed their physical and mental well-being. He only wanted the healthiest volunteers who could withstand the grueling conditions of semi-starvation. After all, his plan was for each of these healthy and average weight men to lose approximately 25% of their body weight in 24 weeks. So how did he plan to do this? 
The starvation experiment was divided into three distinct phases. The first phase lasted for approximately three months and was designed to calculate the precise caloric needs for each individual to maintain their body weight. The volunteers were instructed to walk each day for a total of 22 miles per week and engage in meaningful work for 15 hours each week. Many of the volunteers actually took classes at the university and some even graduated. Others who had a scientific background even helped Keyes and his research team with compiling the scientific data. But once Keyes had this vital baseline data, everything was about to change. The second phase of the experiment was about to begin. The volunteers who had until now been receiving roughly 3200 kilocalories of food had their caloric intake slashed down to little more than 1500 kilocalories. Which might seem like plenty to some, but remember that these men were still expected to engage in daily activities. Go on their 22 mile walks each week and endure the taxing exercise tolerance tests that they had to complete on a regular basis. Moreover, their diet was manipulated to largely resemble that of the war torn European nations. And so they ended up consuming little else other than cabbage, potatoes, and wheat bread. You can imagine how boring that got. They also had unlimited access to black coffee, water, cigarettes, and chewing gum, at least initially. Chewing gum was rationed later on in the study as some men were found to consume up to 50 packs of chewing gum a day. Ansel Keys and his colleagues realized that each stick of chewing gum contained a few calories from sugar, which would eventually add up when the men were consuming 50 packs of the stuff. But how did this semi-starvation state affect our volunteers? Well, initially, besides the weight loss, which was entirely expected, the volunteers were kind of okay. Their behavior did not deviate significantly, and they were in generally good mood. However, as the study progressed through its 24 weeks, evidence of psychotic behavior began to emerge. Food became a central focus for these men, so much so that they lost interest in nearly everything, including their sexual desire. Romantic relationships these men had prior to the study began to crumble, and some of the men began to collect cookbooks and engaged in plate licking. The men became so fixated on food that they developed what could be best described as voyeuristic tendencies, where they would actually buy food for complete strangers and enjoy watching them consume it. Depression, hysteria, and hypochondriasis began to run rampant among the men, and they became increasingly inconsiderate to one another. Many thought themselves to be on the brink of madness and considered quitting the study and probably would have, were it not for the knowledge that their suffering was only temporary and that it would provide a great deal of knowledge on how best to relieve the suffering of millions of civilians who had suffered the hunger of war in Europe. The participants were also found to be constantly cold and their pulse dropped significantly. At the end of the six months, Ansel Keys' prediction ended up coming true, as the majority of the men lost on average 24% of their body weight. Now that he had starved them, Ansel Keys began to refeed the men in the third and the final phase of the study. Initially, the volunteers were given 2,000 kilocalories per day, but this was raised to 4,000 kilocalories when the rate of weight gain was found to be insufficient. Some men lost even more weight upon refeeding. And instead of offering symptomatic relief like you would expect, the men's suffering only intensified with refeeding. In the third week of refeeding, a man named Sam Legg, then weighing little more than 113 pounds, chopped his three middle fingers with an ache. When asked about it almost 50 years later, he admitted to not knowing whether he did it on purpose or not. Despite providing the men with up to 4,000 kilocalories during the refeeding phase of the experiment, the men gained the weight back only very slowly. They were also constantly hungry, even after consuming enormous and well-balanced meals. It seemed like no amount of food could satisfy their hunger, and so a number of the men saw their mental health continue to decline even after refeeding had commenced. Something that may resonate with anyone who has been on a crash diet before. You can starve yourself for however long you want, but once you start eating again, you may find that you are absolutely ravenous, and that nothing can satisfy your appetite. The plate licking continued, irritability turned into aggression, and the mood swings became even more severe. 
When asked about their experience almost 50 years later, now that they were in their late 70s and early 80s, the men were absolutely adamant, however, that the experiment did not harm, did not result in any long-term damage to their mental or physical health. This was largely because of the healthy and professional relationship the volunteers had with Ansel Keys, who they felt genuinely cared for them. Ansel Keys would often ponder on the ethics of the Minnesota starvation experiment more than the participants themselves. However, many of the findings of the Minnesota starvation experiment could not be used in refeeding the millions of starving civilians in Europe. The war ended earlier than expected, and the results of the study were just simply not ready. Ansel Keys had not finished the study and had had no time to analyze its results. Ansel Keys went on to have quite the career too, producing some of the first research on the causes of heart disease and establishing the causative link between blood cholesterol levels and heart disease eventually earning him the cover of Time magazine in 1961. And many of the volunteers went on to have distinguished careers too, after their participation in the Minnesota Starvation Experiment. To learn more about what they got up to, you can check the description below for the references. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did then don't be afraid to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Love you all to bits and see you all next week, until then, please stay safe.